Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that's not only timely but also deeply concerning for anyone involved in the Canadian healthcare system, especially in emergency medicine. The objective of this video is to shed light on the current crisis from an insider's perspective, discussing the challenges we face and exploring potential solutions. In this video, we'll cover the current state of healthcare, delve into the crisis in emergency medicine, discuss ethical and social implications, and explore potential solutions. So, let's get started. The Current State of Canadian Healthcare In Canada, healthcare is often lauded for its universal coverage. However, the system is far from perfect. According to recent statistics, emergency room wait times have reached an all-time high, with some patients waiting up to 16 hours for care. This isn't just a number, it's a reflection of real-life scenarios. I've personally witnessed patients waiting for hours in agonizing pain, and it's a situation that's becoming increasingly common. The question we need to ask is, why is this happening? Is it a lack of funding, poor management, or a combination of both? To support this, consider that healthcare funding has been stagnant, growing at just 2% annually. We'll delve into these issues in the coming sections. Emergency Medicine in Crisis The crisis in emergency medicine is multifaceted. First, let's talk about overcrowding. Emergency departments are often filled to capacity, leading to hallway medicine, where patients are treated in corridors due to lack of space into one of the bays. Second, resources are stretched thin. From essential medications running out to outdated equipment, the system is struggling to meet basic needs. Lastly, staffing is a significant issue. Physician burnout is real and nurse-to-patient ratios are often dangerously high, compromising the quality of care. But what are the underlying causes of these issues? Is it systemic inefficiency, or perhaps a lack of political will to enact meaningful reforms? To delve deeper, systemic inefficiency often stems from outdated administrative processes lack of coordination between departments and sometimes a culture resistant to change on the other hand the lack of political will could be attributed to budget constraints competing priorities or even a lack of understanding of the gravity of the situation these are complex issues that require multi-dimensional solutions which we'll explore in the next section ethical and social implications the challenges in emergency medicine aren't just logistical, they're ethical and social as well. When resources are limited, who gets treated first? The ethical dilemmas surrounding triage become increasingly complex. For instance, consider a scenario where two patients arrive simultaneously, one with a life-threatening condition, and another with a less severe issue. Who gets immediate attention? Moreover, social determinants like income and location can affect access to emergency care. It's disheartening to think that your postal code could determine the quality of care you receive. But unfortunately, that's a reality for many Canadians. These issues raise important questions about the fairness and equity of our healthcare system. Potential solutions While the situation is dire, it's not hopeless there are potential solutions to consider. But what's driving this problem? And is there a solution? According to a recent report from the Canadian Medical Association Journal, the crisis in emergency medicine has been decades in the making, long before the pandemic exacerbated the situation. In the short term, Telemedicine could alleviate some of the pressure by providing remote consultations for non-critical cases. Expanding on this, one immediate solution to address long wait times is the broader implementation of telemedicine. This is particularly beneficial for patients in rural or remote areas, allowing for initial consultations to be conducted remotely. 
long-term solutions might involve healthcare reform, focusing on preventative care to reduce emergency visits. Another strategy that aligns with this is the development of advanced triage systems. These systems can prioritize patients based on the severity of their condition, ensuring that life-threatening cases are attended to promptly. Public awareness campaigns can also play a role. Educating people on when to seek emergency care and when alternative healthcare services would be more appropriate. In terms of primary care, increasing the number of family medicine residencies can produce more general practitioners. Financial incentives, such as loan forgiveness, could encourage doctors to practice in underserved areas. One of the most pressing issues is staffing. The report emphasizes the dire need for proper staffing in emergency departments. Strategic planning, including employee retention and recruitment, is crucial. Retention of medical professionals is vital. Competitive compensation and benefits, along with a focus on work-life balance, can make staying in Canada more appealing for healthcare providers. Lack of proper staffing not only affects patient care but also contributes to physician burnout. A significant issue we cannot ignore. For chronic disease management, specialized community clinics and investment in home healthcare services can be effective. These measures can help manage conditions like diabetes, COPD, and heart failure without requiring frequent hospital visits. Technological and administrative changes could also be part of the solution. Implementing more technology could streamline processes reduce busy work, and speed up the referral process. These changes could alleviate staff shortages and improve patient care. There are also successful programs, such as fast-track systems, in countries like Sweden. That could be implemented more widely. Lastly, advocacy and public awareness are key. Medical professionals and the general public alike must engage with policymakers to bring about necessary changes. But implementing these solutions requires concerted effort from healthcare professionals, policymakers, and the public alike. In summary, the Canadian healthcare system, particularly in emergency medicine, is at a critical juncture. We're dealing with overcrowding resource limitations, and staffing issues, all of which have ethical and social implications. The time for change is now, not tomorrow or the next year. I urge you to not just engage in dialogue but to take action, contact your local representatives, join healthcare advocacy groups, and let's collectively push for the reform we so desperately need. For a more thorough overview of Canada's healthcare crisis, I suggest watching the YouTube video titled Waiting to Die Canada's Healthcare Crisis by Aaron Gunn. Hit that subscribe button and join our community. If you're already subscribed, remember to hit that like button. Please help my YouTube channel grow. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Did you like the video? Please leave a comment below. Thank you.